Hello everybody, what is going on? I am Joey. So on my last race at Cal Speed Karting in the Sprint Series, I got my very first podium coming in second place. And uh, yeah, I'm kind of speechless as you can see. And a week later, it's still exciting. And I, your first podium is always special. You know, I've never gotten a podium in any other series. And yeah, I, I don't really know how to put it. It's just exciting. It was a crazy race. I started in ninth and I was working my way through the field. And I was sitting in fifth for most of the race. And I went two laps to go, I made a pass for fourth. And I thought I was just gonna stay in fourth. And on the very last turn of the very last lap, I just dive bombed down the inside and I got myself into second. And as Daniel Ricardo famously said, sometimes you gotta lick the stamp and send it. And that's what I did. And I ended up crossing the line in second. And if you look at this photo, it was a photo finish, literally. Um, I think it was about a few tenths from first to sixth place. So pretty crazy. And I didn't really expect the move to pay off, but it was just an unbelievable race. So let's get into it. All right, so here we are going to the grid. So I'm starting this race, I thought in ninth, but the race telemetry thing said I was starting in eighth. And the confusing thing about Cal Speed is if you look at the grid spots, they're actually next to each other directly. So I don't know if the inside or the outside uh, is the higher position or not. So I was either eighth or ninth, but the bottom line is it's only a fourth row start. Actually, take that back. It looks like a fifth row start. Yeah, so then it must have been a ninth. Anyways, so getting ready on the grid here, and pace-wise, I was very strong. I just, uh, qualifying, my seat slid back, so therefore that kind of took me out of contention for that. And then the first heat I did very well in, and so this put me all the way up in 8th or ninth. So here we are, just waiting on the grid, and so let's cut to where the race begins. Now actually, one thing before I start the race, um, I noticed as it was so hot, I think it was 116 degrees on track at one point, not only was my visor starting to fog up, I was just like sweating so bad that, you know, it was just, it was miserable. And so as I went, I don't know if we can see it here in the frame, but I went to open my visor to just, you know, kind of clear out my helmet and I just got sweat all over my visor. So it wasn't fogged up, but it was dirty and it's always annoying to be, uh, yeah, I guess you could say visually impaired in that way. So it was a bit of a distraction, but nothing major, but it was a long time waiting on the grid. Um, I think a bunch of people had technical issues. So here's the flagger getting ready. So I'm just getting myself ready, get my throttle position correct and Lights out and away we go. Now, normally the start procedure is a little more clear. The way he dropped the flag was confusing. Uh, this guy was clearly using the braking gas. So I actually got a bad start. It was an 11th, but again, down the inside there. Uh, the trick is just finding open room. And so all of a sudden, coming into turn four here, uh, I'm finding myself, I believe, ninth. Uh, it was kind of chaotic. I wasn't really sure what position I was in or trying to judge myself. Was it a good start or not? I mean, off the line, technically no. But the thing is, the first couple corners, it's all about timing. And if you're not smart about where you're placing the cart, the race will never go your way. You just, you have to wait out. Like here, I, in theory, had an overtake opportunity, but I waited it out because it wasn't that clear. And let's say that overtake opportunity failed. Well, behind me, I could lose all that time and get caught up in that crowd. And the thing about these main races is, the starts are always aggressive because everyone, you know, it's the final race. You want to do your best. And so what happens is the groups start to split up. And that usually happens due to just being slowed down from traffic. And so that's why you have to be smart about timing because you don't want to get slowed down. Again, here I have to lift because it's just, it's not a clear opportunity. And all of a sudden he's slowing me down. And you can see the front guys up there are starting to pull away. But it's nothing major. And that's the thing. It's only lap two. So coming up to the Sportivo hairpin, I'm thinking about an overtake, but again, it's just, it's not worth it. And I think the thing I learned from the previous race was, let's just be smarter on timing and wait for a mistake. For example, this guy in number 55, he made a mistake back in that turn. He lost two spots. Now we're catching up. So it, again, had I been aggressive, there he goes. He loses it again. He goes wide and now we're past. And all of a sudden, look at this. Now I'm right on him. If I want to go for an overtake, my chances are high. So it's just about being patient and going for it at the right moment. You know, you obviously don't want to be too patient where you don't pass at all, but being too aggressive doesn't benefit you. Now running up the hill here, 
I have pretty good momentum, and I'm just, I'll am just i do my trick of just break later. Again, simple trick, but I'm by him. So, hey, gets me up another position. No contact there. So I'm trying to catch these guys in the front, and again, it's always kind of chaotic through there. But they're starting to pull away, but it's simply because I went for an overtake there. But the thing is, when you're in a tight group like that, there's going to be traffic, and so I'll have a chance to catch up. So I'm not worried at this point. So at this point, I'm running fifth in the race, or actually sixth, take that back, and I'm just looking for an overtake opportunity, but again, I don't want to get far behind, because as you can see, the front guys are pulling away. So I think that's a key thing about this race, was just timing. Um, it really rewarded me, and I think that's probably, you know, besides having raw pace or not, that's probably the most important thing about karting, is just knowing when to overtake. Again, I lift there. Yes, I had the inside could I have made it work? In theory. But it was not guaranteed and not necessarily even close to being guaranteed. If I got it, that would have been great. But it's all about finding the opportunity. Again, I go down the inside, but then I lift again because it's just not a clear moment. Now there, I kind of bump him, but he gains an advantage, so no penalty for me. And I'm starting to lose time a little bit. But again, I just, I don't, my thing is I need to look at overall. You know, yes, I can gain a position, but if that loses me time overall... It's not worth it, is it? So as we're exiting turn four here, coming into turn five, all of a sudden the group is very close again, and I have a lot of momentum. So I'm thinking, I'll go for it, I'll go for it. And again, I lift. It just, it wasn't worth it. And you see, once again, we stay in that tight pack. And the thing about sport karting is, because the carts don't necessarily have the momentum of the two strokes where, you know, coming out of a corner, it'll kind of make up for a mistake. When you go for an overtake, it has to be perfect. And spot on. It's got to be a quick and done. And that's just simply because if you get a bad exit, everyone's going to pass you. So that's kind of the tough thing. And I didn't do too well in that last corner. So again, I'm kind of falling back, but then I'm kind of gaining. Now, one thing to note before I move on here was this barrier you might have noticed. It got split in two. Uh, that's, that's the first part of the barrier there. And then this is the second part of the barrier. I guess there was a huge collision where someone went through the barrier but one thing to note was yeah, right there, I want to say it's like a piece of wood or something. So I had to be careful to go straight over and, you know, not try. To, I don't think I'd puncture a tire, but don't want to damage the carts. So that was a bit surprising, but it also made a bit for a confusion on track limits because usually the track limit would be, you know, you can only go to the barrier. But no one seemed to abuse the track limits or get confused. But it was just interesting. Now, coming onto the straightaway again, I get a much better exit. And so I'm just, you know, don't lift, don't lift, don't lift. And I get by him pretty clear. So I can take the corner. I used way too much curb there, which unsettled the cart. So that probably cost me a tenth or two. So he's, I mean, he's falling back, but he's not exactly far behind. Uh, I'm just kind of, I guess, in my own little bubble. The top five guys, are, no, I'm in fifth now. So the top four guys, they're just pulling away. And so I just need to find raw pace in me. And, you know, I have clean track. That's the thing. I'm not going to get brake checked or anything. So if any sort of situation were to happen, I would actually be the one gaining the advantage. Now, coming up to the Sportiva hairpin, I've now caught the group. Um, it's about a lap later. And again, no off overtaking opportunity. He gets bumped there. And so I stick to the inside and he suddenly squeezes me. And I don't think that was intentional. He just didn't see me. Uh, it's, if we look back on it, it's a very risky overtaking opportunity because, one, you don't want to hit this curb, but there's barely less than a cart width. And so when he comes across, if you look at, if you were to draw a line out, he would be aiming for that apex. So it it's not a dirty move. He just didn't see me. And as you can look, I'm totally in this blind spot. But I managed to fight him off. And so we're wheel to wheel going down here. But since I have the inside and I'm a little bit faster in the straightaway, I go for the overtake which does work, so I'm happy with that. That puts me up into fourth, and as you'll notice, these front three guys will start to pull away again. I'm just thinking at this point, all right, I'm happy with fourth. Again, going into the straightaway, they're starting to lose time as, you know, everyone's trying for an overtake. So I'm just like, I'll come in and pounce on them. But then again, my pace, I don't know. I mean, it was decent. And then I, unfortunately, I bump him there, uh, but he actually sort of gives an apology. Uh, usually if you touch your helmet, so you apologize. And so what happened there, for to analyze this, so 
he goes for an overtake, and then all of a sudden, this 33 guy, he breaks because 45 goes down the inside. So because of that, uh, 56, he suddenly had to slam on the brakes. And so, therefore, because you have just a train of braking, you know, there's going to be contact. And I wasn't able to slow down enough, but the thing was, I didn't gain an advantage, and it was just a racing incident. Um, I started bump him again there. So I just kind of lift for a second, try to get a good exit here, and then all of a sudden, this guy tries to force me wide. But it turns out it actually wasn't him. Uh, in the race, I thought it was because he was the only one I could see. If we watch number 37, this is the interesting thing he... Whoops. This is the interesting thing he does. So as I'm coming for the braking zone, he's right on me, and he actually bumps me. And then here, they're wheel-to-wheel -wheel going into turn four, not using an overtaking spot. That's the interesting part. And so because of that, I kind of get forced wide, and he was the only one I could see. It's just one of those situations where people just constantly being aggressive, and again, it doesn't pay off. The overtake failed. So I'm in fourth here, uh, running pretty strong, but again, those front three guys, they just pull away. So I just need to keep my head down, keep pushing, and find some extra time. So coming up the straightaway here, the white flag, so that means the last lap, and I'm just thinking, I could actually get a podium, but I need to push, because raw pace-wise, I don't think I have it. So I'm just trying to be precise, hit every braking point, turn in perfectly, get on the throttle as early as possible, and I'm catching, I'm catching, I'm catching, but again, I don't have the pace. So I just need to get, this is all about timing, that's the thing. You know, speed-wise, I don't really think I was top three, but timing-wise, I was. So again, we're pretty much bumper to bumper here. And I'm thinking about an overtake, but again, not worth it. And they pull away anyway, so it wouldn't have worked. So again, I turn in here. I try to go down the inside, but he holds the outside line very strong. And going into this next turn, the inside line's the quickest, so it's the way it is. And here's where the, I wouldn't say chaos, but just interesting moment happens. So um, he swoops across on 45, and he tries to go down the inside, major dive bomb. The thing about these carts, though, is... They have a very, very hard compound attire, and so grip-wise, can't really do that. Um, but he took a chance. Uh, it didn't pay off for him. And this guy, he went for the normal racing line. Now, 33, who was leading the race, he just thought, I'll let him go down the inside. That's not going to work. And as you see, it does, and he understeers why. Now, the move I want to look at is we watch in full speed. When I make this overtake for second, it looks quite dirty. But it's when you slow it down, it's actually not. That's the interesting thing. And I didn't feel good about it originally. I thought I'd get a penalty. So watch as I'm going for this. So my plan here is I'm going to have my front wheel on pretty much the entire curb. And I'm giving plenty of room on the outside. Now, the regular racing line, you'd hit your apex pretty much a little at the barrier, a little past. But again, if you're going for an overtake, want to go down the inside. Now, I am using the full curb. Uh, there's no denying that of that. And now, I want you to watch his steering wheel right here, because this is where it gets real interesting. So as I'm going, he keeps turning in. And I don't know if you caught it there, but if you count the trajectory of his cart, ideally he would hit the apex perfectly right here. However, since I'm on the inside, he would also bump me. Now watch on the next frame. His steering angle suddenly changes. Now the cart is set to go here, which would jump the curb. And jumping the curb... Is not the fastest way, and that would also squeeze me off. So he turned in on me. Was that intentional or not? Can't tell you. Don't know. And again, look at his steering angle now. He is desperately trying to just squeeze me off, but I leave him plenty of room on the outside. And what ends up happening because of that, he makes contact with me, but he gets forced wide. And then he ends up uh, tapping him right here. And therefore, I'm able to claim second place. And now it's kind of a drag race to the finish. If you turn behind me, Pretty close, but there we go. Crossing the line in second place. And yeah, that was pretty incredible, to be honest. Uh, last lap overtake in the final corner. So there you have it, finishing second. Uh, my very first podium, always super special and just amazing, to be honest. I mean, I never would have expected to get a podium and I would be happy with the fifth or fourth result. But the fact that I was able to get a podium is just, I don't really know. It's interesting and hopefully we'll have plenty more to come so 
Let me know if you guys want to see more karting content or just racing content in general. But I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you haven't yet, make sure to subscribe to the channel for more content to come. And as always, I'm Joey, and I'll see you next time. Goodbye. Yes!